Dancing Rabbit is a living experiment for people to uncover how to live more sustainably. And we're doing so cooperatively because cooperation is the secret ingredient to sustainability. We've created our own microgrid, our own power system. We're creating networks of gardens and people who build and grow our own food for us. We've created a whole network of people who are building buildings in a more sustainable way. We have people who are reclaiming natural resources and trying to create new things with them so that we don't need to make choices of buying or participating in systems that add to the exploitation and oppression in the wider culture. So at Dancing Rabbit, um, we don't just want to like live this way, we want to know that we're having an impact. So we've done an audit of our impact on the planet. And uh, we found that we consume about uh, a tenth of the resources of the average American. And that's like as far as reduction of use of fossil fuel, of water, of uh, transportation and vehicles, um, solid waste, uh, like we're producing much less trash than the average American. Um, all these different ways that we're really making a huge difference. And so if other people can uh, sort of use some of these systems that we've implemented, they can do the same thing. I remember when I came to Dancing Rabbit for my visitor program, I was potty training my son Lennox. So he actually learned to use the bathroom here at Dancing Rabbit with the humanure system. And when we went back to home then, he was mortified of like, why would I go to the bathroom in the water? Fishes live in there. And it was really neat to see that, yeah, my three-year-old totally understood this concept that is sometimes too radical for my parents to even wrap their heads around. So Dancing Rabbit is really well known for the things that it does in terms of outer sustainability, but that's not the only type of sustainability. In fact, we need two other kinds of sustainability in order to really create communities that are sustainable. And that's the interpersonal type of sustainability, and that piece comes through with communication and conflict resolution, how we work with other beings, and then there's inner sustainability, and that's the skills that we need to not burn out. What do we need to do to replenish ourselves and make sure that we have the resources to bring to the task at hand? One of the unintended benefits of moving here with my family has been the opportunity to raise my boys in a community that embraces diversity. And they have been able to learn from many different people, many different perspectives, and the nonviolent communication has really become, has worked its way into the fabric of our family communication and has benefited them in ways that I certainly didn't anticipate. For me, a key element of sustainability uh, has to do with social justice, uh, or I should say social injustice. Um, I have had the opportunity here at Dancing Rabbit to confront uh, my own unearned privilege. Uh, as a white male, um, I, I'm kind of embarrassed to acknowledge that there were a lot of ways in which I was, I've simply been blind to the, the, the benefits that I've had as a white male in our culture. Sustainability is also about the way people are able to relate to each other. And in the wider culture, unfortunately, there's a lot of oppression and marginalization that happens. But here at Dancing Rabbit, we really are a safe space for people who have experienced that and where they can come and dive into sustainability and the things that we have in common while being honored for their individuality. I have a lot of friends who come here and experience the joy of not being judged. Like others at Dancing Rabbit, I share my kitchen. Um, not everybody eats in their own uh, individual space. And that sharing um, is, I think, pretty essential to the, the social fabric that we have here. 
It's not only do I get to develop much deeper and closer relationships with a lot of people who are not part of my nuclear family, uh, my kids get to interact with other adults who have different life experiences than I do. Um, and I get to cook once in a while instead of having to cook every single day. And that frees up so much time to just hang out playing with the kids or go run around and throw a frisbee or um, I don't know, just there, there are so many other activities that I can now participate in with other people that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So at, at Dancing Rabbit, economically, we're kind of on our own. We've set up systems to cooperate with each other and share resources, and I think that's a big part of our economy. But as far as how we make money, uh, it's up to the indiv individual to figure that out. We don't have a cottage industry here like some intentional communities have, and so uh, each of us has to figure out our way, uh, a way to, to make money, and that can be a struggle, definitely but we do have a number of ways that people can come in and plug in. We've got the Milkweed Mercantile, which is a worker-owned cooperative here. We also have the nonprofit, the Center for Sustainable and Cooperative Culture. And the nonprofit provides education, workshops for folks, tours and different things, and it also runs the outreach programs for Dancing Rabbit. So at Dancing Rabbit, we're invited to each share our piece of the truth. And when we really claim our own agency and stop giving our power away to outside authorities, then we can start to co-create a governance that doesn't feel like the sort of policing or power over model where I just have to follow rules. We start to realize, oh, I've shared my information and the group is taking that information, using it to make a decision, and we're all agreeing to live by it because we know that that's the best thing for the whole. I love that at Dancing Rabbit, even though we're seemingly isolated in Northeast Missouri, the middle of the country, we're actually really connected to other communities in a lot of ways. There's communities locally, we call ourselves the tri-communities, and we share meals weekly, have events collaboratively. Um, we also work with other communities in the country beyond Northeast Missouri. The Fellowship for Intentional Communities is also reminding us that we, as eco-villages and communities, are part of a larger movement. We're part of a whole movement of people that understand that we're moving right now from a time of intense separation back into cooperation, back into collaboration. Dancing Rabbit is not the only community that's doing it. And the Fellowship for Intentional Communities reminds us who our team is, who's on our team as we're coming back together and starting to play the game of cooperation and sustainable living in different ways all over the planet.